Shalom, shalom. Uh, it's the brothers from the Hopeful Elect Man back again with another video. Uh, giving all honor and praise and glory. Obviescence, you know, and oblations to the Most High God by the way of his son, who's an instrument of salvation for the nation. Um, I'm Azrael. Brother Dana. Brother Yeshaya. You know, hopefully uh, this will be very factual on this factual Friday. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully souls can be edified and one to the most high God. Hopefully, uh, you know, people can uh, learn from this lesson. You know what I'm saying? We would say it's not going to be that long like Brother Denal and his lessons, but we know how the spirit goes. So first and foremost, want to say Shabbat Shalom on the east coast, the south side of Babylon. You know, the sun is pretty much down. So Shabbat Shalom. Or uh, I hope everybody has a restful and peaceful Sabbath day, right? So getting straight into it, we can go to Revelation 2 and 5. All right, let me share a screen. All right, we're going to get straight into it, Revelation 2 and 5. So the title of this is uh, Remember Where You Have Fallen or Remember Whence You Have Fallen, right? Uh, because one at, at one time, our nation of people whether they try to whitewash it or erase it at one time, right? We were, um, we were on top. We were in control of things, right? We had righteous rulership over the world where other rulers would come and, uh, tell us, you know, you guys are so wise. You guys are so understanding. Teach me some of that knowledge, right? Like the Ethiopians and Queen Sheba did to King Solomon or, uh, how all the nations knew who King David was, right? So, um, with that being said, we're going to go to Revelation 2 and 5. Revelation 2 and 5 reads. I'll read it. It said, right. remember, remember, therefore, can y'all hear me? Con. 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 So, it says, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come up. I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Right. So that's that verse right there just told us to remember where we where we have fallen. Meaning this is the this is the last book of the Bible, as the Spanish say, apocalypto. Right. I think that's what they say. Um, and, you know, this is the revelation that John got from Christ himself. Right. So. This is, the, this is the end. These are the latter days. So he's saying to rem remember where we have fallen. Why? Because we once were in heaven, so to speak. We once were at the top. But towards the end of the world, who's going to be in rulership? Esau. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the one that followed. So we had to go through what we went through because that's prophecy. But it says, remember, therefore, from whence you have fallen and repent, meaning to turn. Turn away from what? And do the first works. The first works is how righteous we used to be when we were coming out of the wilderness, right? How righteous we were when we were coming out of Egypt. You see, whenever the Most High does something terribly great, because he's a terrible, great God, whenever he does something terribly great, we got our act together because it's fresh. It's right in our head. But it don't take our nation long to forget where we came from. It don't make take our nation long to forget what we saw, what we heard, right? What we witnessed. So that's why throughout the, the Bible, the, throughout the Holy Text, it's a reoccurring statement to say what? Remember, remember the Sabbath day. Remember um, to remember my feast, right? Remember from whence you have fallen. The whole thing is telling us to remember because we're a stiff neck, stiff hearted people with short term memory. And that's why we always get into sticky situations. But um, it also says, or else, I will come unto thee quickly, like a thief in the night, and will remove thy candlestick. So he's gonna remove that candlestick is synonymous with your spirit, right? Uh, that your spirit is like a flame of fire. You don't want that flame of fire to go out. He said he's gonna remove our candlestick if we don't do the first works, if we don't act like how we're supposed to act, right? If we don't do the law, statutes, and commandments, the things that he told us to do, that we will be blessed by, right? He said he's going to remove our candlestick, not only dim our spirits, but he's going to remove us out of our land like he did. He's going to remove us from his good graces. He's going to remove all the the dainty things, all the gold, the silver. He's going to remove all, all the fancy jobs that we used to have, 
the rulership. He's gonna remove all of that from us, right? So that candlestick is synonymous with a lot out of his place. See, out of his place, we're not, we're no longer in our place anymore. We're we're somewhere far away, right? Um, except I repent. So we gotta repent. So I felt like that was a good scripture to get us into this. Because they, it says verbatim, remember from whence thou has fallen, because we have fallen as a nation. Black Lives Matter can't fix this, right? Um, the NFAC, not effing around crew, can't fix this. Malcolm X couldn't fix it. The Minister Black Lewis, Panthers, Lewis Farrakhan can't fix this. What'd you say? The Black Panthers, the Five Percenters. Right. Egyptologists. Hey, all these things can't fix our situation. The only thing that can fix our situation is repent. And do the first works, right? Remember who we was before we went to Egypt. Remember who we were before we was in before we was uh, in captivity. Remember who we were before we were called black. Before we were called Negro. Before we were, we was called African American. Remember who you was before Joseph was even a pharaoh. Remember who we was. We was a nation of people that was keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, right? And for that reason, was God on our side. So, um. Let's go to Jeremiah 16 and 11. Con. Right? Because I know a lot of times we always talk about these other nations and how they got swift judgment coming because of what their forefathers did. But the only reason why we in this situation is because of what our forefathers did. Con. That's what a lot of people um, on the street bring out, you know, um, when we bring out the judgment of other nations and whatnot. And they were like, why we gotta, why we gotta uh, pay for what our our ancestors did this in the third and a lot of people bring out well we're paying for what our ancestors did you know what i'm saying right now even to right. today um. and why 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 don't you have to pay for it if we got to pay for it you know what um. i'm saying it's a, it's, and, a uh, it's just um when it dealing with other nations it don't seem fair that's why paul even says in his letters is there unrighteousness with god because it don't it don't seem fair from face value when you say an innocent person got to die, an innocent person got to suffer, an innocent person got to get their, their head dashed against the stone. They didn't do nothing wrong. But you got to think about all the innocent people that got injured, got beaten, got hung, got set on fire, got castrated, separated from their families. They were innocent people that were keeping the law, statutes, and commandments that these things happened to during the slave trade, during the during all the uh uh, uh tro um what's the word um uh, i say tribulations atrocities. Atrocities, atrocities and atrocities and tribulations that our people went through you know what i'm saying there's plenty of us that were innocent but did they care no did the most high care no it's a judgment and he offers his judgment on nations not just singular people so a lot of times even our people will get offended because we'll be on the street corners teaching about nations we don't talk about the outliers we talk about the nation and they'll say well we're, ju we're just talking about the higher ups we're just talking about the elites no we're talking about the nation because right. i'll be i will be a liar if i said that some innocent innocent people weren't going to be hurt for the judgment of their fathers right so we can let's read say it's the book. bible con con hey i gotta ask them can y'all hear me put con. the microphone back on up it sound low you sound, you, you sound, sound like, like you, you know, um, in the back of back of the room. It sounds like you know when you call somebody and they got it hooked up to their car, or if they underneath the water. Can y'all hear me now? Sound the same, really. Yeah. What happened to the first connection, I? Right? Man, I'm trying to stop you from using this headphone. It looked tacky. Y'all still can't hear me. I mean, you might as well take the headphone off now. It sound the same for some reason. It don't. It don't sound bad. We can still hear what you're saying. You just sound uh, very echoed. Can y'all hear me now? That's much bad. Salakia, <laughs> yeah. But I was just um, adding on to you know the innocence. When it talked about, um, you know, what happened to our people, especially, yeah, it was a lot of our people that was, you know, innocent bystanders to a lot of these situations. A lot of our people, you know, were trying to keep keep the laws and they still had to pay for it. So, you know, we know that um, to our people who preach, 
oh, but they're not guilty. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. Well, you know, like like your brother said, that you got to consider the people who have family members, you know, that didn't do none of, none of the things that uh, got us to this point. But we suffer for it as a nation. It's just like that thing where we quote drumline. We say one band, one sound. You feel me? Yeah. It's like one of us is late. We are all late. One of us looks to sound bad. We, we all, all look sound, sound bad. bad. Con. So <laughs> you got to have that, that, that one band, one sound mindset when you talk about uh, recompense. Because as a, we, we suffered as a nation and they're going to one day suffer as a nation for the things yeah, that the people who preceded them did. Go ahead. Con. And, and we talk about innocency, but... You know what I'm saying? Um, technically speaking, you know, we're not really born into in, in, uh, innocency. You know what I'm saying? We're not really born into that purity, especially like say if 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 a nation is is being wicked, right? And you born into that nation, that nation, bro, you automatically born into wickedness. Why? Because you're gonna automatically pick up those wicked um, attrib attributes and characteristics. Right. Not only that, you're already born in. So take it for our instance right now. Right. So we know that the, the so-called Edomites raped, robbed and murdered to get this land. So any other Edomite that's born on this land, you are privileged enough to be able to walk on these streets. Um, you know, what I'm saying freely because of your ancestors. You know, what I'm saying you would never be born on this land and given the rights that you have in that in the. Um, um, um the inheritance that you may have you know what i'm saying on this land if it wasn't for you know what i'm saying what happened so you partaking in that eliminates you from being innocent you know what i'm saying yeah. and, and you, you know a lot of times a lot of times these people will be subtle and they'll look at you in the face and they'll cry sometimes lower their voice get real compassionate and say i don't it's, it wasn't me I, I i wish i could change it i wish i could make things better and a lot of times these people that are like that, they have the ability to make it better. You know what I'm saying? They have acres and acres of land inherited by, by their family that they could just give out, you know what I'm saying, to, to people that were in slavery. But will they do that? No, they're not going to do that. To, to your point, I was just watching a video the other day and, and a lady was talking to, you know, one of our brothers on the street and, she, and um, the brother asked, well, how can we fix this? And she said, by having conversations like this, we can have the whole world have conversations like conversations is not gonna fix nothing, bro. I seen hey, I seen that video too, and she had on her and her daughter had on some nice jackets that looked pretty expensive. They was going to see a concert Man. here in Babylon. They the was spirit, living it up. But the spirit they, I that bet was on I bet the spirit that was on my bad, I'm sorry. No, you good. The spirit that was on um, her daughter, bro, was vexing me the whole time, bro. Because it's like, man, the 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 way you come up so arrogant and so and so proud, like you know what I'm saying. You know for a fact you're 100 percent down with minorities and stuff like that, bro. Off rip tells us that you're not down with us, bro, because you're not coming in no fashion of of humbleness. Like your mom came with a little bit of humbleness, but you came like you was ready to walk away. You ain't gonna tell me I'm I don't I, I'm not I'm racist, blah blah blah. I know I'm not racist. Well, let us have a conversation with you, and we'll explain to you how the acts that you're doing are racist, and the statements that you guys are saying even right now are racist. You talking about some? I oh, know I'm not racist because I've dated a black guy. That has nothing to do with, with, with what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like that has no bearing on whether you're racist or not. If, if anything, that makes you even more racist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that, that you just made makes you even more racist, though. Uh, but um. Con, but you know we're not here to talk about these other nations we're here to talk about our nation and how we've fallen and how we've been punished you know what i'm saying um but uh read um jeremiah 16 and 11 real quick all right this is the book of jeremiah chapter 16 and verse number 11 then shalt thou say unto them because your fathers have forsaken me saith the lord and have walked after other gods and have served them and have worshiped them and have forsaken me and have not kept my law verse number 12 and ye have done worse than your fathers for behold ye walk everyone after the imagination of his evil heart that they may not hearken unto me verse 13 therefore will i cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not 
neither your fathers, and there shall ye serve other gods day and night, where I will not shew you favor. Uh, and that's how iniquity works. Iniquity works with like generational curses. So, so it starts out bad, and because it starts out bad, that bad becomes a normality, and then the people after that make it even more bad, then that becomes a normality, and then so on and so forth. And so to cut the, the head off the serpent, he just had to remove us out of our land. He had to remove that candlestick. He had to remove us from our high position because he said that he exalts those that are low estate, but those that exalt themselves, you know, he can bring you low. He can, you know, abase you. But, um, you know what I'm saying? So, hey, look, innocent and guilty. We was all punished because of what our forefathers did and because of the situation that we ended up in. We could look at Daniel. Daniel was a righteous man, but he was still in captivity. Uh, we could look at um, we could look at um, Salakia. My mind is going blank. Esther. We could look at Esther and her family and all the, the Jews. You know what I'm saying? They were in a low state in captivity. Mordecai was a righteous man, and he was he steady, he was steady getting tried. Right, the three Hebrew boys: Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah. Hananiah. They Brother were all righteous and worthy. Yeah. Time. They was all righteous and worthy, but guess what? They was in captivity. We think about Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all these mighty prophets. They was all righteous men, but the Most High allowed them to be cast into prisons, allowed them to be tormented by their own people, right? Allowed them to be afflicted and put in captivity because of the iniquity of their father. So we got to remember where we have fallen from, right? Uh, um, even the biggest example, um, Christ. Christ was persecuted technically for the iniquity of, of his fathers. Right. And the people you, the people would say what? Um, uh, can a savior come out of uh, Nazareth? Can a savior come out of Nazareth? Because Nazareth was such a, a poor estate. It was such a, a poor city in Jerusalem. It was such a, a ghetto. It was like a section was eight. It? Was it Nazareth or Bethlehem? He was called Jesus of Nazareth. And the, this, it was Nazareth, and that's why the people uh, were trying to catch him up on charges because they was like, he's supposed to come out of Bethlehem. But it was his seed of David because he came out from David. But he was... He was from Nazareth. So that's why they said, can a savior come out of Nazareth? But, um, Salakia, let's get some examples of where we used to be as a people or as a nation, right? Mark 2 and 17. Tom, so let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 2. Salakia, I didn't put Luke. Mark 2. I'm going to start at 17, I know. 17. And it says, when Jesus heard it, he said unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Con. So I went here just to <clears throat> show that there were physicians. I went here to show that we were physicians. We did heal people. We did um probably more than likely do surgeries right because nothing's new under the sun so at one point in time our people was physicians we wasn't in section eight housing we wasn't in um um huge debt right we wasn't in another nation school system we was the people teaching we was the people actually doing the work physicians right so that's an example let's go to acts 5 and 34. time the book of Acts, chapter 5, and verse number 34. Right, and so we're just going to some examples, right, to show you who we was as a people. We wasn't just niggas or wetbacks, right? We wasn't beaners. We wasn't just blacks. We wasn't a minority. We were actually things in the world that mattered before these other nations were things in the world. Nowadays, you go to a hospital, you know, we praise black excellence because it's rare we praise it we go into the we go into a hospital or onto a law firm we'll see asians and indians before we'll see our people right it's almost unheard of to see a whole black clinic so-called black clinic because 
that's how far removed we have become, even though we are the ones teaching these people these things, teaching these people these exercises, teaching these people these practices, right? So um, let's read this real quick, Acts 5 and 34. Acts 5 and 34. Then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law. A what? Had a doctor of the law. Right. Had so we was doctors of the law. Nowadays, you get your Ph.D. And we feel so good that we get to shake. Uh, I don't mean to. I'm not trying to be racist or nothing like that. But we get so happy that we get to shake the so-called white man's hand to get a PhD, right? We work our butt off to shake somebody's hand on the stage and get a piece of paper that say that we're a doctor of the law, right? But our people, we was the original doctors of the law. We was the original doctors. We were the original lawyers, right? We was the original people that had common sense of health and common sense of right and wrong and morality, right? But nowadays we work our butt off to compete with people that are lesser than us, right? That's supposed to be learning from us that don't have common sense really, right? And we learn and study their books and learn their practices that really potentially kill our people, right? We know that when COVID happened, a lot of our people wasn't dying from the disease. They was, they was dying from the care and the treatment that was, being, that was being pushed, right? And you'll ask some of these nurses, why are y'all doing this? Why, why are you doing that? And it's kind of like programmed in their mind that if this happens, I do this. Right. They don't ask or stop to think about how every situation is different and they have to care for each person with um, practicality. They just taught these things. And so now we have people being put on um, machines that already have asthma and their, their lungs are collapsing. They can't breathe no more. Right. We got people that's allergic to certain things and people are just just pump it into them because they've been taught in school. When this happens, this happens. Right. right? Every every situation just becomes a simulation, you know what I'm right. saying, and repetition, you know. Uh, and, you know, if, if anything about simulations and practice, you don't really get the um, you don't really get the consequence if you mess up. You know, you do something, you, it might get, flash you like warning, you know, what I'm saying do something else. Right. But in real life, you don't get those. The, the actual warnings is sometimes risking somebody's life, you know, and. A lot of times, and and you know, what I'm saying the medical field and stuff like that. That's what it become. And you know, me and you working in uh, the hospital, we've seen that time and time again, where it's not become. It, it's become. It went from a care and a want to do it to it's just a regular job. And each patient, <laughs> excuse me, each patient is just a it's just a another tool. You know what right. I'm saying? Because we used to care about people when we when we were. The people that was over that, people used to come to us from other nations to ask us to heal, right? Kings used to come to our people because their wizards and their wise men couldn't fix it, right? They, we, was, we used to take care of people because we had that knowledge. We had that wisdom from the Most High God. But nowadays, like the brother just said, it's just a business. It's just a job. Somebody dies, guess what? The people that was working, it's just a job to them. They go home, eat at the dinner table. Tell, maybe tell their wife or their husband what happened at work and they move on. They show up the next day. But our people, it weighs on us. You know what I'm saying? Our people, we, we, you'll even see some of our people be nurses and they'll be, they'll know that something's going on and they don't want to do it. But because of their position and because the doctor said this, you know, they'll, they got to go ahead and do it. Even when it comes to, um, since we're talking about lawyers and doctors, even when it comes to our judicial system, I think it's very messed up that. Um, for example, somebody can kill my whole family, right? He can go to jail and he can have a bail before his trial. He can have a bail of a million dollars, right? And you know, he only got to pay what? 10% of that. So 10% of that million dollars gets paid. But do I get that 10%? No, the judicial system, right? This, this nation or this government system gets money based off of my tragedy. That money should go to me. If we was operating with the law, statutes, and commandments, that money would go to me to bail him out, not to the government. He didn't do nothing to the government. He did something to my family. But that's just another way or another reason why, you know, I believe that if we were in charge, the people wouldn't mourn. You know what I'm saying? The righteous people, righteous people, they everybody would be 
pretty much at ease. There would be no heavy burdens because everybody know there was a just cause at the end of the day or a just uh, reasoning or a just, um, what's the word? Or a just um, decision or ruling, right? Um, so Lakia, Khan, we can move on to the next one. Go to Isaiah 41 and seven. Right, so this is doctors, lawyers, right? Let's see what else we were. Isaiah chapter 41. Oh, Salakia, I keep scrolling on this thing. Isaiah 41 and verse number seven. And it reads, so the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. Hey, look, that's two people right there. You got carpenter. Nowadays, you know, you'll see, you'll see black people in trades, so-called black people in trades, so-called Hispanic Mexicans in trades. But really, it's so political now that to be a carpenter, you got to be a so-called white man. You know, you don't really see our people. You see our people in the labor positions. You'll see us cutting grass. You'll see us, um, you know what I'm saying, picking up trash, cleaning up after natural disasters. But all the, the carpenter jobs, the, the painting jobs, stuff like that, hey, that, it's hard for our people to get into that. You got to know somebody, right? But at one point in time, we were the ones building the pyramids, right? We didn't build all the pyramids now, but we, I believe we built them to a point. They couldn't get it to a point without us, right? Go ahead. Um, I also say, man, and it's not even the fact that that um they're just the uh the the they're at that carpenter painter level, right? They have made it to where you gotta get a certain certification for all of these things that you can learn how to do on your own, you know what I'm saying? And I know we got plenty of our like Issacharite brothers and stuff like that that go out and be carpenters on their own and be painters on their own without the certification. And yes, they get hired and whatnot, but best believe. They're not getting paid for what they for the work that they actually put in because they don't have that certification. Right. And that's just another thing that's weighing down on our people. We're not getting the wages that we deserve. And again, that goes against the laws because you got to pay the man what he's owed before the sun go down. You know what I'm saying? Right. 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 So. Um, and then on top of that, we constantly have to look at our checks. We constantly have to look at it. You would think that we're employed. We went, we did all the paperwork. We don't have to constantly look at our checks to make sure that they are right, but they constantly stealing money from us, even at our lowest state. So we're, we're subject to uh, subtle debts as the Bible says, because uh, we haven't paid it or we haven't uh, obeyed the most high God and hearkened to his voice. And we once had these jobs. We once had these positions and we once were in charge of these positions. But nowadays, because we didn't keep the law, sections and commandments, it's not so. So he said, us carpenters encourage the goldsmith. So hey, look, we used to work with each other, right? Nowadays, we don't work with each other. We work against each other. But we used to be goldsmiths. How many black, so-called black goldsmiths do we know? How many so, so-called black Hispanic, I mean, Salakia, so so-called Hispanic goldsmiths do we know? All the ones I know are Jewish. You go to these jewelry stores, and even if our people do get into a... a our people do get into a position to where we can have our own jewelry store or make our own jewelry. We giving all our money to the to the other nations, right? We'll see these rappers and their their favorite jeweler is a Jewish man. Their favorite jeweler, it's not our people. They spending millions of dollars with these other nations. It might be an Asian man, right? It might be a regular Caucasian man or something like that. Or it might be an Arab, right? They get their gold from. But it's not, it's never our people. But hey, used to. Hey, King Solomon's whole temple was nothing but gold. We used to be decked out in gold and silver, and people used to, you know, come to us for these things. We used to shape their their gold, right? We used to cut their diamonds and their rubies. But nowadays, we are the ones spending money on these other nations because we've fallen from our estate, right? We're so happy to just have it on and just wear it. But, hey, the people that's selling it to us is the ones that's really happy because they're profiting off of us, all right? Um Salakia. Um, yeah, that's it on that one. Let's and go if, to go ahead. And I was gonna say to add to that, man, it's just like we such we in such a low estate now. I seen uh the brother Dr. Umar say something uh, the other day on the story, and it was just like, man, uh Americans, I think he was spewing out statistics from 2016. Um, just elaborate on uh the black Americans, right? Not even counting our Hispanic brothers and sisters, but 
we buy these materialistic things because they serve as a status symbol because we're so poor minded. You know, we think that in this captivity that having these sorts of um, clothes, shoes, cars, jewelry, all these things bring value to us. And that's not even the true value. And it turns, like you said, that's just going back into like how everybody used to come to us to find to want that value, to feel like we to feel like we feel now. They wanted to come to us to feel like they made it somewhere because we're the ones who used to like be the person in charge of cutting the jewelry. Like you said, we the ones who used to do that. Now we might buy a Mercedes like the, the brother Dr. Umar said, if you even can't afford it just to look like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we made it just to look good, All just right. to be in the presence of our enemies. And they have some respect for us because we drive the same car. You know? right. Somebody um brought out the, um, I was watching a video and somebody was brought out, the fact that uh, even some of these other nations, when they get over here to this boiling pot of confusion, right, they want to emulate like they have money, right? Like so-called Africans, right? When they come over here, the first thing they do. The last year, they're not emulating. They're not emulating the law. They got it. Trust me. They're not like you, that. Kind, con, con, con. The first thing they do when they get over here, man, the first thing they do when they have a kid or anything, they put a gold chain around that kid's neck, man. The first thing they do, man. A lot of a lot some a lot of Asians are starting to do it too, man. If you if you if you just pay attention to a lot of these um nations that that oppress us, man, even they start at a young age, man. They put some type of jewelry around their neck, around their arm or whatnot to to you know what I'm saying, signify that status, you know what I'm saying, or that that they just wanna be up there, you know. And uh I was I used to move furniture. Uh, from rooms to go and you'll see a lot of our people when you look at the moving trucks two men two guys in the truck rooms to go you'll look at i don't know ashley's furniture nine times out of ten it's the so-called black person that's in them, in them trucks because that's a hard job and it's really slavery but i say that to say when i was doing that um i remember i used to go to some of these asian neighborhoods they, and yeah that's right they have whole neighborhoods here in atlanta whole neighborhoods of, of Asians, whole neighborhoods of Arabs, right? And I'm talking about nice top tier neighborhoods. I'm not talking about a section eight housing. I'm not talking about government assistance. I'm talking about, you know, top of the line suburbs. And um, the crazy thing is they'll have all these North faces. They'll have all these Yeezys. They'll have all of all the black styles, all the expensive black styles just in a house, right? All over the place, right? That's our fashion, but they can afford it with ease. But our people, you know, we struggling to just look the part. We struggling to look like us. They can look like us with no problem, right? And still our style and our fashion, but we struggling to look like us. And like the brother Yeshaya just said, right? Uh, we'll be living in a, a one bedroom apartment with a Mercedes, right? Not even it's not even a gated community, we, but we got that Mercedes. You know what I'm saying? We got that Scat Pack. We got that Jeep. Right. We got that uh, with the doors off. We got, you know, we got that Corvette. Today I went at a, a family dollar and it's not no it's not no new family dollar. It's not in a good neighborhood or nothing. It's it's a busted family dollar, to be honest. If you want to ask me, it's a busted family dollar. But who pulls up? One of our sisters, Eve, pulls up in a brand new Porsche truck. Why are you at a, in a Porsche truck and you still in this area? You, see, you know what I'm saying? Because nine times out of ten, she lives in one of these apartments not too far away and you got a brand new Porsche truck when you could have spent your money on a down payment for a house but it's cool because you got your hair done in that brand new Porsche truck but that's the mentality of our people because we had to remember once we have fallen instead of being comfortable at our low estate and making up excuses right um let's go to Exodus 37 and 29. so uh. we got carpenters we were carpenters we were goldsmiths we were doctors we were lawyers. We were physicians, right? Let's see what else we were. This is the book of Exodus 37 and verse number 29. Con, actually stop at 28. 20, Exodus, Exodus 37 and 29. And it said, and he made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices according to the work of the apothecary right hold on one second Salakia.
a lot of kids. That's a lot of kids. Uh, <laughs> while the brother is looking for what he's looking for, I just want to elaborate on um, just going back to that that Porsche truck and that um, and 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 being in you know what I'm saying such a rundown area. I just want to say that I would love to be surrounded by my people. You know what I'm saying, even if I had a lot of all the money in the world but one thing that i definitely think that brothers want to elaborate on is that you know with these uh promissory notes that we receive right we can invest in a lot of a lot of different things to you know help pick our other our other brothers and sisters up because we might see a brother or sister pull up in a, a new scat pack you know a new hellcat and them things them vehicles ain't cheap them vehicles starting at sixty thousand, seventy thousand dollars off the lot. Some of them run up to one hundred twenty plus thousand dollars. And even if you're not paying full cash for your vehicle, that money that you spend a month making that monthly payment, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do as a community to come together and just, um, I would say, uplift one another and you know actually help each other reach that status symbol that we so desire. But the thing is, we have a crabs in the bucket mindset to where it's, instead of being like ants, want to build a bond to get to where we need to go. We choose to pull each other down to try to fight out the bucket because the bottom of that bucket is hot. Right. Hey, look, this land of oppression is hot and it's trying to pull it's trying to burn up all of us. Right. And so as a people, we don't have the mindset. OK, one by one, we have the mindset of now nah, I got to get mine. I don't care how you get yours. They'll somebody will watch this video. Hear the comments that we make and say, oh, these brothers hating because they checking about how another man spend his money. You know what I'm saying? I can afford it why I can't buy it. You know what I'm saying? I can afford it why I can't do this. I can afford it why I can't do that. But it's all about a mindset as a people that we have. You know, instead of it being a form of, okay, look, I want to help build my community. We got to look at it as a form of, look, I make my money. I'm content with my life. You know what I'm saying? You worry about you and we worry about me. And we went to we went into it on the lesson that, hey, look, we're all a part of one body. So that's the that's the thing that I think is most important when it comes to just like remember when we re remembering from when we fallen from whence we fallen it's just understanding like at one point in time we was working together like ants were but now it's like uh -huh. we went from ants to eating crab to now acting like crabs and they say you are what you eat so instead of actually you know what I'm saying being that strong bond of a people you know we dress it up as I look out for my people by protesting. I look out for my people by saying Black Lives Matter and having it in my bio. I look out for my people by saying uh, I root for everybody black. But how do we really look out for our people outside of what the world can see? How do we really look out for our people and how do we really become that nation again outside of saying that Black Lives Matter? You know, that's not doing uh, much for us. Con, you know, like the brother said, instead of uh, purchasing something out your means and paying paying 800 900 a month for a car note you can use that money to what feed the homeless right you can use that money every month to 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 give alms and to help a brother or a sister out but um like the brother just read it says and he made two rings of gold salakia is that what you read no nah, i read 29 it okay. said and he made the holy anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices according right, to so the word of right the apocalypse. It says he made the anointing oil and the pure incense of sweet spices. You need that. You need to understand what he's doing right here to understand what uh, what uh, the work of the apothecary is, right? Uh, apothecary, Salakia. Can you type in Google apothecary so that they can get a definition? Kind. I'm pulling it because, up now. Hey, a lot of our people don't even know what apothecary is. That's how far we've fallen. We don't even know what we what we used to be. Con, it says in Google, right? It came from archaic. So an apothecary is a person who prepared and sold medicines and drugs. Right. So that's a modern day pharmacist. So when we go back to the scripture, the scripture said he pre prepared um he prepared anointing oil and incense of sweet spices. Right. We had natural remedies. Our people had natural remedies. Nowadays, who's the who's the nation of people that have natural remedies for things that people look to for holistic um, healing? It's our people because our people had were the ability to be pot apothecaries. But nowadays, our, you ask a random person on the street, they don't know what, of our nation. They don't know what apothecary is. I know for a fact they don't because I didn't know what it was. 
right? So we used to be apothecaries. We used to be pharmacists. We didn't have to go to CVS and Walgreens. We didn't have to go to Rite Aid. They don't have Rite Aids no more, but we didn't have to go to Walmart pharmacy and to the pharmacy section, right? And hoping they have something to, to cure us. We used to have apothecaries that had natural remedies, right? Holistic medicine. And we used to be holistic pharmacists. Con. And if I can add to that, with going into the what the brother is saying, like, and it says, and he made the holy anointing oil, right? So he made that. We uh, we know that our people made a lot of these medicines like the brother was going into. And that's funny that you say that because going to the book, I'm gonna pull up the apocrypha, right? Going to the book of um Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach or Sirach, however you pr prefer to pronounce it, right? 38. We said we've quoted this many times, right? And it says right here. Matter of fact, let me start at verse one. It says, honor a physician with the honor due unto him for the uses which ye may have of him, for the Lord hath created him. So right. our people were physicians. Uh. That's going early into and the brother was saying that look, physicians been around. Our people were those people, right? For the most high co cometh healing, and he shall receive honor of the king. The skill of the physician shall lift up his head, and in the sight of great men shall he be in admiration. So our, phys our physicians was in admiration because they were making these herbs, right? For the Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. So our okay. physicians weren't abhorring these medicines that the most high created out of the earth. And you can even see it today. Like you said, we have holistic uh, brothers and sisters who are into healing the body with the herbs that the most high have given through us. And that was our people, you know what I'm saying, sent by the most high. Nowadays, a lot of our people in this mindset, like, I can't trust uh, these herbs or these holistic people because they don't have degrees. They didn't go to school for it. You know, we put our trust in big P-H-A-R-M-A, you know what I'm saying? And we're not focusing on the things that the Most High gave us from the beginning of time to help heal the body. You know and what I'm saying? That stuff ain't doing nothing but killing us right. and stalling death. You know what I'm right. saying? And they'll they'll use that stuff up. They'll use it and they'll know that they have bad cancer. They'll know that they have a bad virus or disease and feel terrible. And they in their head, they might say, you know what? Maybe that whole list of stuff might work, but they're just too scared. They don't have the faith. But here we see that the physician is supposed to make stuff out of the earth, right. not in a science lab, not with pills and chemicals in a test tube that fizzes. We made stuff out of the earth. It said a physician made medicine out of the earth, not a physician was in a, a lab practicing how to get by and make money, like the brother said, Big Pharma, right? Hey, man, it's, 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 what, it's a cliche proverb that they always say. Right. Take care of the earth and the earth will take care of you or take care of the land and the land will take care of you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, That's how sure. it's always meant to be. Con, live right. with the land, not on the land. And look, jump it down to, to right here. Right. It said, was not the water made sweet with wood that the virtue thereof might be known. Right. So we have to know the virtue of the wood. Right. And it said, and he has given men skill that he might be honored in his marvelous work. With such doth he heal men and take away their pains. Verse number eight of such the apothecary make a confection uh. and a, a confection is um just like a, a, a sweet delicacy of, of ingredients. Right. And of his works, there is no end. And from his peace all over the earth. Right. So the apothecary mentioned in Exodus 39 is mentioned right here again in Sirach 38. And uh. these apothecaries are like the brother said earlier modern day pharmacists who made medicines of the earth and distributed them out to our people but the uh, difference is our people like we said they have a such a a, a destroyed mindset and a such a a fallen mindset and the crabs in the bucket mindset there's no way in the world i would rather choose promethazine or anti uh ingredients in the medicine over uh fenugreek uh, grass root you know, honey, things of that nature, right? Uh, Go ahead, Ah. Uh. Um, but kind of like the brother was saying, hey, everything that the two brothers said is is spot on. But and also like the brother said, with the other precept uh, that we just brought out, it said he made anointing oil. How many people you know making anointing oil? We just buy regular olive oil or something from the store that another nation most likely made, and we put that on ourselves and call it anointing oil. But our people used to make it. People used to come to us, go to the prophets, go to the priests, 
for the anointing oil because they know they made it a certain way, right? But now everything we got is GMO'd. It's, it's all fake. It's all false. It's all phony, right? Because we've fallen from our estate. So we was apothecaries. Let's get um, Genesis 14 and 14 real quick. Con, going to the book of Genesis, chapter 14 and verse number 14. And it says, and when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Con, so at one point we had servants in our own house. At one point we, we trained people. We were the lieutenants. We was the colonels. We were the people in these high, the generals in these high places, right? But nowadays we're just in the infantry. Right. We're 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 enlisted. We're not even officers no more. Right. Nowadays, hey, I just had a conversation with um, a man um, at Fort Valley State University, and um, he was telling me how he was enlisted back in the days where, uh, you know, the, the war of Vietnam was going on. And he was lucky enough not to get drafted to the war or to get hey, over there. That's and the he spirit, was, bro. You and know he why was in, the spirit? Hold on. I was going to touch good, on what good. you just said. Yeah, you good. My bad. And then uh, we got to talking just about the military and whatnot. And um, he was so excited because uh, I didn't even know that we had a, a general. He's a general now at the Air Force Base here at Warner Robins. Uh, and, um, I think he, I think he's a uh, um, purple and gold, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he graduated from uh, Fort Valley State. And um, also, also, um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we just got to talking. And I mentioned that my dad was a colonel in the military. And... Um, he uh, it's like you. I mentioned that my dad was a colonel in the military and whatnot, and um, <laughs> and uh, he was just, you know, what I'm saying, deeply expressing to me, oh, for he was like in awe. He was like, you know, I've lived so long and I've only met a handful of uh people like us that are high ranking officers. You know, what I'm saying to hear that to him is like bizarre. He's he was like he never thought he would even see the day where he saw a so-called black man in, in in as a presidency. Of course, we know that you know he was a hamite, but you know what I'm saying. Like the brother was saying, man, it's, it's hard for us out here, man. We can't uh -huh. get into these positions. Uh -huh. I don't know what day that was, but the Most High, even though we are far apart, he still got us acting like twins. Because I literally in my living room, I don't know if that was yesterday, the day before yesterday, was talking to um was talking to uh. I guess an in-law family member. And um, he was saying the same thing. He was talking about how when he was in high school, he said, man, they was drafting people like crazy. I was dodging it. He said uh, he had went down the, down the street to like Detroit because they wasn't, I guess they wasn't drafting people in Detroit, but uh, he was hiding from the draft. You know what I'm saying? And he was uh, scared because they was enlisting our people. They would go to, to where we at to enlist us. You know what I'm saying? Cause they want us to fight in a war. And we didn't have a say so, but we'll, you know, join the, the another nation's army, right? That's still oppressing us to help that nation. But, you know, that's wickedness and that's, that is what it is. But, you know, at one point in time, we was like Abraham. We had servants. We trained people for war and we used them for our needs. We used them to get our brothers back, to get our brothers freedom, right? And to pursue other nations and to conquer them. But nowadays, you know, we're not at that high state. Can you get Judges 7 and 7 real quick? Con, this is the book of Judges, chapter 7. It's like it. Judges 7, 7. It said, And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped you, this is like it. Let me start over. Judges 7 and 7. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped Will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand and let all the other people go every man unto his place? Con, so hey, we used to have mighty armies and mighty militaries. And uh, it didn't take a lot of men because the most high God was using us. Right. And we used to subdue other nations, subdue other countries, subdue, subdue other lands. But nowadays, we don't do that. We're getting used by other people to subdue lands for them, right? Nowadays, we don't have nothing to fight for. We've, we've fallen so far, we don't have nothing to fight for. We fight for other people. 
right? When the whole thing happened with Ukraine, we're praying for Ukraine. Some of us trying to send care packages to Ukraine, right? But what about our land? What about our people? What about where we are? The way we're being treated, right? right. At one point in time, the Most High was dealing with us because we obeyed his commandments and we would subdue other nations, put them in check. And when he would use that as an example to where we wouldn't, we wouldn't even have to do it to the other nations. The other nations would just hear about what happened or see what happened and they would fall in line as well. You know what I'm saying? But we're not at that, that estate anymore. Nowadays, instead of wanting to have a mighty army for our nation, right, we're, we're, we're better off winning championships, right? We used to cry, sing, and dance for winning a war and being mighty in war, trained with the shield and buckler. But nowadays, we're happy holding a trophy. We're crying. We, we got our family on stage, right, because they've reversed the roles for us because they want us to not overcome. They want us to be docile. They want us to enjoy uh, what they want us to enjoy because they understand there's an actual war going on and they understand they have to keep us at a certain state, right? Go to Google real quick, type in uh, Michael Jordan holding trophy. Everybody's seen this meme. Everybody's seen this picture of Jordan. And you know, I believe his dad had died, but uh, when he got this trophy, it made everything better in a sense. You see him holding this trophy for dear life with tears in his eyes. Like he just won back the land of Israel. Like he just beat Goliath. Like he just like he just subdued a whole nation of people. Right? This is what they want our people to indulge in. This is what they want our people. And because of this picture right here, I guarantee you tens of thousands of young black men, so-called black men, bust their butt in the parking lot bust their butt in the driveway to get to this moment right here. It's not to win our land back. It's not to be a nation again. It's to win championships. You know, so, it's crazy, bro, because, you know, so many people emulate this picture, bro. So many people muster up tears, even if they don't have tears in them, to look like this, bro. To show, LeBron, to show LeBron even of, will try to muster up tears. To show some type of passion for what? A, fa a gold-plated tr uh, trophy? piece of metal at the end of the day what is it an idol god it's an idol because you, you gotta understand you cry like that to the, for the most high i know these men would not cry like that for the most high kobe con and you know and to um to add to that you know what i'm saying you gotta understand that these people took crafty counsel right if somebody could pull that scripture up asking if you could put that up on your phone and just read it you don't have to go to it yashaya oh, you could have kept looking at the pictures if you wanted to but um they took crafty counsel amongst each other to, to, to figure out how to keep us at a low estate. They'll give us money, right? They'll give us bags of cotton, right, to be proud of. I can read it for you. I got it. Oh, got God, it? God. My read bad. It real quick. My bad. The book of Psalms, chapter 83, and verse number three. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. Con. So guess what? They, they said these people are so strong and athletic. These people, if they got together and, and they band together and made a militia, they probably would take us out. We got to give them something to occupy their time. We got to give them something to change their mindset of victory because we want to keep the land. But I was going to say they, they gave us a replacement for something for us to excel in huh. because they didn't want us to excel in taking over the world. Huh. So now we're, 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 we're okay with winning championships instead of uh, winning land we're okay with um we're okay with being celebrities instead of being kings right and and rulers we're okay with um we're okay with um Salakia. we're okay with um you know what i'm saying being in gangs and dying for gang culture instead of dying for um our our law statutes and commandments Right, all this stuff that's not us, we're okay with because they took crafty counsel to put us in here, and like the brother just said, to replace where we came from, to replace it so that we won't ever get back there. And nowadays, we live our lives for that. We live our lives. We we spend our whole life, right? We'll put off raising a family for these things, right? We'll we'll put off um, family members. Um, and um, righteous conversation for these things. We'll kill our bodies for these things, right? Mm -hmm. At one point in time, we used to be apothecaries and holistic medicine, 
But nowadays, uh, you'll see the wickedness in Haiti, the wickedness in all these Caribbean islands when they do palm readings, tarot cards. They do all these things, right? Uh, if you could um, type this in in Google while you got Google up, type in Book of T's. You know how to spell that? You said type in Book of what? Book of T's. B O O K T I E S. It should be Booker. Nah. Like the wrestler. Nah. B O O K T I E S. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, but we can get a definition and then after the definition, go to um go to images. B O O K hold on. T I E S. All right. So our people, you know what I'm saying? We into like book of teas. Is this what you wanted? Uh, type in it's B O O G I T Y. Oh, oh, all right, B O O G I T Y. Book of T, yeah, that's it. Yeah, con. All right, what does boogity mean? Booger T. Well, pretty much of go back go back to google type in type in doll after that yeah so after that type in doll so like a voodoo doll um, yeah. i know they call it a booger t in that one movie you watch that movie so yeah I <laughs> like that's the that's, it's that's creepy. Hey, that's the movie right there though. Hey, and it's our people in it. You know the uh dude that played Ghost. Yeah. I think it's Omari Orlando, huh? Omari Harvey. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 He's he's the star in that. But I I advise y'all to watch that movie because you know that's that's our people for you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Hey, but man. um, but um, be crazy. No, no cap though. It's a lot of history in that. But. You know, our people, instead of doing holistic medicine and instead of doing righteous ceremonies, ceremonial things, as far as, you know, with the flower and the, and the, and the hen and the lamb and the doves, we don't do none of that righteous stuff anymore for righteous reasons. We make book of D dolls, right? We do voodoo dolls, right? We do witchcraft. We do tarot cards, right? Our people would make these things, right, to control people to control the, the health of people, the outcome, right? And they would tap into the spiritual realm, right? If brothers could understand and if brothers believe it, they would tap into the spiritual realm and control the physical realm. But, you know, our people was a spiritual people. That's why, you know, um, they say them brothers over there in Haiti are the Levites. And it might be so because the Levites was the priests. They was very, very spiritual. And we know the people over there in Haiti is very spiritual people. And they're really into this voodoo. And we know that, you know, in, in Louisiana, you know what I'm saying, in New Orleans, they do these things. And uh, we got to watch out because we got to remember from where we fallen. We once was doing these things on the right hand side for the most high. But now we're doing these things for monetary gain and for uh, evil. You know what I'm God. saying? In the movie, man, uh, Loretta, Loretta Devine, the actor, you see right there at the top, um, should say, uh, Good come to the book of tea, good come to you. You know what I'm saying? And like the brother was saying, man, the Haitians, man, they take they took, you know what I'm saying, the stuff, the knowledge that they were knowledgeable about and, and twisted it on the left hand side. Uh and the Haitians very well could be the Levites, you know what I'm saying? Um, I heard a brother bring out that you know how the priests would deal with the Urim and the thur the thumb and thumb him, thumb Urim and the thumb him, you know what I'm saying, in the in the Bible. y'all familiar with what I'm saying? What I'm talking Urim about, the I thought it was like when, when they're in the thumb, the thumbing, yeah. But, um, you know what I'm saying? They would, they, they, these instruments would be used to um find out the house of somebody's father, right? And what they would do is they would throw it on, they would make the concoction or whatever of the of, of these things, these tools, they would throw it on the ground and it would show them things, right? And even today, like when you go to Haiti, they bring out the fact that. They're still doing that in Haiti, except for they do it with bones. 
So they'll take uh -huh. bones and they'll throw it on the ground. And same way that we our priests used to uh, see things from these from these uh, tools, we're seeing things from these bones on the left hand side. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying? You know what I'm saying? We used to be a very spiritual people, but we've fallen. So we got to remember from whence we've fallen to get back on the most high's good side because all this stuff is, you know, the worshiping of other gods. And we're going to continue to have these curses put on us and continually, like, if you look at the, 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 the state of Haiti right now with all the voodoo that they do, the most high God's hand is heavy on those people because if we look at just their lifestyle, they're eating mud pies, literally. They don't, you know, they're bloated. They don't have good water they don't have a good government gangs run their their territory right the most high god is, chaos. Is, right it's it's mad major chaos over there right so we got to remember where we fall and we also you know we mess around with the universe and crystals right we done lost our god we done fell so far we done lost our god we we give glory to the universe right we don't think who made the universe we give glory to crystals right we how can you worship a stone? How can a stone make you healthy? Right? So we've fallen a long way. Con, hey, that's these the movie right there. Look, these things look creepy, man. Nah, no, it's a it's a decent movie though. I ain't gonna lie to you. Just gotta I wouldn't watch it late at night though. Con, I would I would watch it like in the morning time. But um <laughs> but uh let's go to Leviticus 1926. It's the book of Leviticus. <laughs> Chapter 19 and verse number 2026. 20, right. I love Leviticus 19 because it got a lot of commandments in there, right? If you ever want to just teach somebody about how our people are and our heritage, the con. So Leviticus 19 and 26, and it says, Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe times. Right. So our people do all those things. You know what I'm saying? We've fallen so far that we do all these things. We we see that really our people, we are followers. We're not leaders. We're supposed to be leaders, but we become followers. We see other people put um, bottom feeders and say that they're delicacies. So we think they're delicacies. We see other people put a high price on raw, on raw meat as far as like the rarity of it. And they don't eat it well done. So we want it rare. We think that's bougie. We think that's fly. We think that's um, upper class because they do it when they get money, right? So we will eat things with the blood in it. You know what I'm saying? And also our people, just to get celebrity status, we'll hear rumors and see these celebrities, Jay-Z, Beyonce, all of them, these have these spiritual doctors and these spiritual leads and guides, and they'll be doing all different type of rituals, eating and drinking blood. And, you know, they'll try to make light of it, but, you know, it's a reason why we were told not to do those things so we don't worship other gods. It says, neither shall you use enchantments, right? Our people, these tarot cards, palm readings, and it's a reason why they're so cheap when you go to the farm, uh, to the uh, slocket, to the fair, you'll see these tents, 50 cents for a palm reading because it's evil. Evil is going to be easily accept, uh, accessible. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I remember I was dating this one girl when I was in the world. And I still had the common sense to not go into them tents, but she claimed to be a Christian and she wanted to go into every single tent that was wicked. I'm like, what the heck you trying to do? Like they could alter your life. They could, you're, you're playing with the devil. You're dancing with the devil, as they say, you know what I'm saying? And then it also says, nor observe time. So we're not supposed to observe times. That's what Jeremiah 10 and one tell us. Don't ob observe the ways of the heathen, but because we've fallen from where we came, we don't know. Where we're supposed to be so we ha we all we can do is observe the heathen and their holidays all we can do is observe the heathen and what they eat and what they and what they wear right uh, con and you got to think like this let's go to manifold because if you go to um first samuel 28 28 i'm starting at verse number eight right this is all right here right because we know that we're not supposed to use enchantments nor observe times, you know. Hey, look, this example of Saul right here, and it said, and Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring, bring me him up whom I shall name unto thee. So right here, he's seeking out a, 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 a wizard, a witch, pretty much an enchanter a, a, a person who uses divination 
Hey, to man. pretty much tell him the uh, fortune. Go ahead, Al. It's funny, man, because when you watch these movies, man, and they're going to fortune tellers and whatnot, they they always are just like Saul, man. They they disguise themselves. If they don't disguise themselves, you know what I'm saying? They're sneaking, sneaking to these places, man. They might have a hood on, right? They don't want nobody to know where they're going, man. And they pop up trying to find their fortune or trying to talk to so and so. You know what I'm saying? It's just like the Bible. Right. Look, you'll see them knock on the door and whisper, "It's me. I'm here." Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And anything that's got to be that secretive, man, and that's that sneaky and conniving, man, you know it's on the left hand side because we can go to our our God in prayer at any moment, and and you know what I'm saying, and feel comfortable, and not have to feel like you know we got to sneak around to do these things, right? Hey, look, and it says right here in Leviticus the 19th chapter, going five verses down from 26, it says. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So here goes Saul doing what he does and breaking the, breaking the commandment again. Why well, he know me wrong? It's a lot of too. Saul's really breaking his own commandment as well because Con. the lady, the witch, she said Saul made a commandment to banish us. So this is a right. trick. You know what I'm saying? She said, you're trying to trick me so I can go to jail or something. But he broke his own commandment. Sometimes we'll go against our own selves, even though, though we know it's wrong. You know what I'm saying? We'll return to our vomit. Or like the pig, we'll wallow in the marsh again. You know what I'm saying? After we're clean and after we're a king and after we killed thousands, you know what I'm saying? We'll bring ourselves to a low estate and we don't remember where we once were. And now it's, you know what I'm saying? It's gotten so bad to where, you know, we're deep in the, stuck in the mud. Con, man, it's like it's like uh, when brothers can't remember why smoking uh, hookah is bad, and so I'm gonna do it now. You know what I'm saying? Hey, con, a gift will destroy a lot of our hearts. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, a gift destroys your heart because once you get that gift, you're like, man, I don't care about anybody else's opinion. I don't care about what they think. I know what I, I know what I know, and I know how I feel about myself. Who are they to tell me something? A lot of times you only take advice when, when you're humbled or being humbled or when you're at a lowest state. But when you're at a highest state, you feel like nobody can tell you nothing, right? And then when you feel like that, nobody wants to tell you nothing because they don't know how you're going to take it. But our people, we have a false sense of being high. We have a false sense. And, you know, that goes straight into um, drugs. Khan, Chalawam, Obadiah, Mighty Buck. One, Hey, keep it a buck. We trying to keep it a buck with y'all, too. But... um. You know, we have a, a sense of being high all the time. That's why we're always on drugs. That's why we're always on um, depressants and alcohol. We have a sense of being royal and and at, in a high stature. But guess what? That's all fake. It's all false. It's all deception. It's what they want us to believe, right? Because they're the ones pushing these rap videos and music videos and R&B songs. They're the ones pushing um, all these people to buy these things, right? I always talk about this because I'm like, man, how can Fat Joe be for the people when he's buying a, a $4 million watch? You know how many houses you can buy for your people? But you're buying a $4 million watch influencing the next minority person to buy something very expensive like that instead of building our nation up, right? Like the brother said, we used to be like ants. We used to help build mounds for each other, mountains. But now we've fallen so far down, we don't know where we come from. We we just we are what they want us to be. Con and and Salaki King, if I could elaborate, and you know what? And the way that our people give back in another fashion too is they they tell us how we should give back. Like when our folks get into these NBAs, NFLs, MLBs, or get all this money with rap music or however they making millions of dollars, these people tell our people, "Oh, start a charity." Start a charity, you know. Hey, get a 501c3 and start your charity. Say that you're giving back money uh, to the community through through your charity, nonprofit organization, you know. Get a charity. And and that's how they tell our people that, hey, this is your way of giving back. I got a charity. And you know you what? Make you look good to yeah, your kind. people. Kind. A charity makes you look good, right? It's called a status symbol, like we talked about earlier that the brother Dr. Umar brought out. It was talking how he was talking about elaborating on a status symbol. A charity is a status symbol to appeal to our own people, making them think that, oh, we're doing something good. I got a charity. We all these millionaires that we got in our people, in our community, but all we got is 
a hundred thousand charities and still poverty stricken. You know what I'm saying? And it's a shame because we have fallen so far that we think that we're doing, and, and I can't blame our people because they don't know better because, Hey, look, we're paying for the sins of our fathers, but it's people like it's videos like this. It's conversations like this. That's going to take the change. You know what I'm saying? The narrative, right? But our people don't want to have those because they good with the money they got. And long as you got a charity, long as you got millions in a charity, hey, you doing right by the people, right? My thing is, man, what you got to donate to a charity for, man? You can make that change when you get money like that, right? You don't need to donate to nothing, man. You should you should be able to go straight to the source. What you need, how much you need? Okay, say less. I shouldn't have to go through a charity, but, but these folks know. go through the charity just for just to get a write off, man. Right, to, tax write off. More beneficial to them. Con. Tax hey. write offs and um, voluntary hours. You know what I'm saying? Con. When, like the brother said, they can go straight to the source and and literally change somebody's life. Because we know for a fact these charities, they're they're stealing money in the first place. We know that the, the Black Lives Matter lady, she's making building a mansion. How is she making a mansion if she was just a normal person, right? And we still got black people on the street, homeless, that you're supposed to be supporting. Con, hey, look, we got so many of our people who even play sports in the Atlanta area, and I still see a whole bunch of homeless brothers and sisters that are us, but our people don't know any better. I can't, you know, I would I would be remiss to say that um, our brothers and sisters don't think they're doing the right thing in a sense by like LeBron James having the I promise school, you know, uh, uh, the amount of children he sent to college, you know, paid for their education, gave them a free education, this, that, and the third. Hey, look, that's fine by the world standards, right? In the world's eyes, he's doing a great thing. In a lot of our people's eyes, they'll be like, man, LeBron and did this, then the third, he didn't start school, did that third. I mean, Shaquille O'Neal, he did that third, you no. Know? Hey, look, that's fine by the world standards. But we're trying to think bigger than what the world accepts because anything we always say, anything that the world accepts, the most high is against. The world accepts everybody paying for college, right? But you're paying for college education, right? And you're paying for all these students to go get education. But are they really being educated in something that's going to benefit them or their uh, ethnic background as a people? Right. Uh, we sending these people to school to go get these degrees and whatnot. And all we doing is sending them to school to just be a part of the system again. Uh, we sending them through a uh, what does it call it? Uh, a conveyor belt. It just cycles right back through cycles right back in the system. In the world's eyes, what they do is great. But think about it with spiritual eyes. Think about it with nation building eyes. Uh, we're not truly building a nation and we're not truly looking out for our people. But with the things that we have and the things that we do. We're just only putting a Band-Aid on the wound, but not actually curing the wound. But go ahead, King. I'm sorry. Because we can start businesses like these other nations do and teach our people how to operate that business from the ground level on up to where we're only employing ourselves, right? If you watch that series of um, uh, Miracle Hair Grow, what's, what's that lady name? Um, you watch that series. It's a Netflix series. She's like... I got your America, Madam C.J. Walker, right? She was employing her people, you know what I'm saying? Now, I don't like the way that she exalted herself over her husband and she, you know, did all that, but she was exalting her people, you know what I'm saying? Only employing her people, teaching her people how to do this, right? She didn't go get anybody, and that's what we should be doing, right? A lot of times, um, you know, these other these other nations, their high schools have have, they're plugged in. They have people to come teach them how to weld before they even graduate high school. So by the time, you know, by the time they're out of high school, they're already making $24 an hour. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. But um, like the brother said, we'll go, we'll be happy that we're sending our people to college, right? Even whether it's a PWI or an HBCU, we happy. But a lot of our people come out of college and end up right back at Walmart, end up right back in McDonald's, end up right back, you know what I'm saying, struggling. That's because our people, you know, we need we need we need the most high, really, to be honest with you, to get back to our highest state of being what doctors, physicians, goldsmith, apothecaries, carpenter, right? But um, let's go to Judith five, uh, verse seventeen, real quick, just to get a synopsis of everything that we've read. You know, remember where you have fallen. We once was at a high estate, now we're at a low estate, and we don't even we have we don't even see the top of the mountain anymore. 
we don't even look at the top of the mountain because we're so comfortable being in the valley. All right. Can you read right. That real quick? This is Judith 5 and 17. And while least they sinned not before their God, they prospered because the God that had hated iniquity was with them. Right. So this is in the book of Judith and um, Nebuchadnezzar, his army was conquering all these lands. And so they conquered all the lands except for Israel or they said the kingdom of Judah where the Israelites were. And um, he had a councilman that was counseling him against the children of Israel saying, hey, we can we can go and take these people over. But if they're not in um, if they're not uh, if they're on the most high's good side or they're if they're on their God's good side, we're not going to win. We got to make sure that they're at least sinning or, you know, when we attack them, we got to make sure that they're in sin. They're on their on the God's, uh, you know, what I'm saying bad hand. And so that's what these nations do to us today is make sure that we're constantly in sin to keep us at this lowest state because it's nothing new under the sun. Right. So that verse just said um, we prospered when we did not sin against our God. You know what I'm saying? Because he was with us. Read verse 18. Verse number 18. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground and their cities taken, Salaka, and their cities were taken by the enemies. So, hey, look, out of all the nations in the world, that only sounds like one nation of people, the so-called minorities, right? It says when we sinned against our most high, against our God, right? Guess what? He did all these things against us that we can see today. He departed from us. Not a, a lot of our people is looking for the truth trying to find a God, trying to find, you know, anything with spiritual meaning, right? He appointed them, Salakia. He appointed them, Salakia. They were destroyed in many battles, right? We we lost many battles. Even in these other people's battles, we get killed. We get killed in other people's battles now, right? Very sore. And we're led captive. Hey, we've been led captive to many nations, all because we disobeyed the Most High God. All right, into a land that was not theirs. We're in a land that's not ours right now. We got to remember where we came from when we did not sin against the Most High God and He was with us and we prospered because when we sinned against Him, these things happened to us. And the temple of their God, we don't have no temple no more. Our people don't even know that we used to have a temple, right? But the temple of their God was cast to the ground and their cities were taken by the enemies. Right. Like brothers went over Black Wall Street. You know what I'm saying? We, we can't have nothing without it being cast to the ground. Right. Read right. verse 19 for me, Baba Kasha. Verse number 19. But now they are returned to their God and are come up from the places where they were scattered and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Right. So it was desolate. So this is talking about what's going to happen. We're starting to return to our God right now. And that's why hey, this video is even going forth. This teaching is even going forth. Why? Because we got to remember from whence we've fallen and remember to return to him so that he can come back to us and he'll gather us from the places that we've been scattered and we'll possess our land again. Right? Read verse 20. Verse number 20. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error against this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. And let us go up and we shall overcome them. Right. So they said before we move on these these this nation, let's make sure that they're in the wrong against their God. Let's make sure that, you know, they've sinned against their God in some way before we do it. Because if not, just like uh, Haman in the book of Esther, right, his wife and his friend said, oh, you're messing with the children of Israel. Oh, surely you're not going to succeed. I didn't know that. That's I didn't know you was going against the, children, the Jews. Right. And that's what this man right here is saying. Right. Can you read verse 21? Verse number 21. So I can let me scroll a little bit. Verse number 21. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them and their God before them. And we become a reproach before all the world. Con. So a hey, rock and his song, he said, uh, paraphrasing, he said, what if we all stop sinning at once? What if all the so-called blacks, Hispanics and natives stop sinning at once? The earth can't take that. 
if we all started keeping the Sabbath, if we all started keeping the feast days, if we all started eating healthy, if we all started teaching our kids right from wrong, if we all started treating each other with love, right? The Not only that, bro. That. Not only that, bro. Just think about if the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, if we all realized that we were all the same people, that we were one nation, you know what I'm saying? You think about the camaraderie that the Native Americans have, the camaraderie that the, the Hispanics have amongst each other, right? And sometimes even so-called uh, Negroes in America, you know what I'm saying? The camaraderie, and you combine all that together, we're unstoppable. Ain't nobody stopping us. Like, there's uh, nothing that we can't do, you know what I'm saying? Nothing that nothing that we want to do on this earth will be stopped at all. It would uh, be too much. Uh, and that's why they took Crafty Council to put us into sports, into music, into, you know what I'm saying, and wickedness. And part of that Crafty Council was... And a part of that crafty council was was divide and conquer to make us right. seem like we were different people. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So right here, he's saying, hey, guess what? If our God be with us and there's no iniquity, hey, let us pass by, let them do their own thing. That's what all these nations are going to do that, right? When we look um, when we look in the book of Ezekiel, mm -hmm. right, towards the, the end days, when we're at that village that at rest and there's a one world order going on, hey, look, we're going to be at peace and at rest, ruling with Christ for a thousand years, <clears throat> Ruling with Christ for a thousand years, and nobody's gonna mess with us. Why? Because we know we're on the Most High's good side. And like they said in Zechariah eight, "Take me with you, for we know that the Most High is with you." They're gonna say that the Most High is with us. It's gonna be clear. It's gonna be evident that the Most High is with His people again. And nobody's gonna try us until they get till Gog and Magog get that evil thought, and they get them nations to come against us. But um, can you get Judith seven and twenty five? And if uh, you get tired of reading. Uh, the brother Denal can step in. It's all good. 7 and 25. And it reads right here, For now we have no helper, but God hath sold us into their hands, that we should be thrown down before them with thirst and great destruction. Right. So right now, the enemy said, you know what, we're going to pursue these people anyway. They took crappy counsel like they've been taking crappy counsel with us right now. And they cut off their water supply. They cut off their food. And now these people, they've been fasting. The, the, the pregnant women, the, the, the little children, right, the old, the young, they've all been fasting because they're being persecuted by the enemy. And now that's what our people are like. Our people... Our people are like this now. Our people say, well, who's God? We don't have a God. Look at us. We're homeless. Look at us. We're in poverty. We're on EBT. We're in debt. We have to eat McDonald's every night. We don't have any good food options, right? That's what our people are saying. Hey, look, these people have cast us down to the ground. They put us in slavery. Nobody's going to save us out of it. Our people have no hope, right? But uh, read the next verse. Verse number 26. Now, therefore, call them unto you and deliver the whole city for a spoil to the people of Holofernes and to all his army. Right. So right now they're saying, so guess what? Let's just sur surrender. So Holofernes is um, Nebuchadnezzar's captain, right, of, the, of, of Nebuchadnezzar's army. He's the captain of Nebuchadnezzar's army. And so they're saying, hey, look, just call them up. Tell them they've oppressed us enough. We can't take this, right? We're going to die of thirst. Just tell them to come and spoil us, right? Read verse 27. Verse number 27. For it is better for us to be made a spoil unto them than to die for thirst. For we will be his servants that our souls may live. And right. Not Stop see right the there. So there's the people in Jerusalem are saying what? The people in Jerusalem are saying, hey, let us be let us be basketball players. Let us, you know what I'm saying, be rap stars. Let us be gang bangers. It's cool as long as they let us survive. We'd rather do that than to than to die, right? We'd rather do that than to um, to uh, ha raise conflict with them, right? We just want to eat again. We just want to at least be be under the facade of living a good life. We don't care. Give us EBT. We don't care. We're we're gonna keep voting Democrat. Get, hey, keep giving us this government assistance if that's gonna make them happy. It's cool. Tell them it's cool. Just tell them to stop persecuting us, right? Keep reading. Verse number 28. No, no. So you I mean, didn't finish oh, oh, so like it. So like it. Didn't finish it. That our, that our souls. Uh, yeah, kind. That our souls may live 
and not see the death of our infants before our eyes, nor our wives, nor our children to die. Right. So a lot of us, are, a lot of men will move out the house just so the family can get that government assistance, just because so, they don't want to see their children die. Right. So a lot of things and, and and the government knows that all they have to do is threaten our children and we're going to we're going to cave in. You know what I'm saying? And so this is nothing new under the sun that we've been treated this way and that our people have this mentality of just give up. Our people are so weak in the mind. We can see the most high God do wonderful acts for us over and over and over again. But it still won't connect. It still won't click that we have a, a God of the heaven. Even these other nations, before they even persecuted us and they took counsel amongst themselves, they understood that, hey, if their God is on their side, we, we can't win. But we, we're so quick to forget when, when trials and tribulations come, when we get persecuted and we just lay down like dogs and we just be cast down to the bottom we, and we don't remember from whence we've come, right? So uh, let's go to Judah 6 and 19. This is how we're going to end it out. Judah chapter 6 and verse number 19. And it reads right here. O Lord God of heaven, behold their pride and pity the lowest state of our nation and look upon the face of those that are sanctified unto thee this day. Con. So hey, this is the prayer we got to make to the most high God. There's people that's American pride, right? We see the, the, the pride. I think it was pride month either this month or last month. This we month. see... Um, all this wickedness going on and how they pity our people, right? People pity us. These other nations, they pity us. They look at us in pity, right? They feel so bad for us. At the same time, they don't feel bad for us. But this is the prayer that we have to ask God to look at every single day because it says the souls cry out. It says they continuously complain. It says that the blood cries out to the most high God, right? The innocent blood, right? So we got to do that in our prayers as well to remind him to, to act on our behalf that we're coming back, that we're returning to him. And we're trying to re remember the place and where we have fallen, like 1 Kings 8 and 47 says, or, or Baruch chapter 4 and uh, 30. So, um, Salakia, read that next verse. Verse number 20. Then they comforted Achior and praised him greatly. Right, because Achior was that counselor. He the, He's the one that went to the Jews and was like, hey, look, y'all got this coming to y'all. I told, I told him not to do it. But a hey, Nebuchadnezzar and Holofernes, they persisted. So y'all got this coming to y'all. So they was able to pray to the Most High God, right? Um, so go to verse 21. That's how we'll end it out. Verse 21. And Ozias took him out of the assembly unto his house and made a feast to the elders. And right, they so called. Ozias, Ozias was the captain of the, the army in Jerusalem, all right? And they called on the God of Israel all that night for help. Right. So that's what we got to do. Right now we're in the nighttime. We're at midnight. It's dark. We're in chaos right now. That's what that's what the dark means. There's no light. There's no law. There's no commandment. We have to cry out all night for help. This is not our land of rest. Right. We shouldn't be looking for the next vacation to go to or the next concert or the next uh, big party or the next social event right we're supposed to be crying for help when the shepherd's right. gone you know what i'm saying we're supposed to be mourning for him we're supposed to be fasting our people don't our people can't fast right these people they was at a high estate so when it was time for them to fast because everything was cut off the enemy cut them off they, they couldn't take it we're supposed to be fasting right now so when we're tried we're able to take it because if you keep reading in this chapter when you get to verse i mean chapter eight judith who's been fasting her whole life after her husband died, she was like, hey, you can't put a time limit on God. You can't tell God he got to work within these amount of days. If he's going to have us to suffer, he's going to have us to suffer. We got to wait on him. We got to wait on the Lord. And so we're not in our land of rest right now. So all the, the Israelites out there that saying, hey, I can I can live life too and be an Israelite, all you super brews. Guess what? The Most High God has men that, uh, for example, Moses, it said Moses, desiring to be with his people, did not want to partake in the, the riches of the of the Egyptians. He chose that. When you read about Jacob, our forefather, when he died, he said his life was long and what? Miserable. So we have to what? We have to pray all night. And that's a spiritual night because we're in the spiritual nighttime. 
were looking for what? The morning star. Now, if you were a runaway slave or if you were somebody that used to live outside, you would look for that morning star because you know that morning is coming. That morning star, you would be like, okay, any day, any, any time or any second, the sun is going to come up. So we're at nighttime praying for that morning star, right? And we know who that morning star is. We're praying for that morning star so that we can get our deliverance, right? But Khan, if the brothers had anything, feel free to give closing statements. Um, I just wanted to uh, just to build on that, man, just to say, um, if you're living in this life right now, man, and you don't have no element of sacrifice going on within your life to uh, cause discomfort in your everyday walk, man, you know, for this truth, then you're doing something wrong, man. You shouldn't be living in this life comfortable and um, having fun and all of that, man, contrary to what a lot of people push nowadays, you know what I'm saying? The whole point of living this life is we're free from sin and being free from sin, we're in bondage to Christ. That means we are servants, forever servants to him 24 seven, right? He says, go present our bodies as living sacrifices, right? We don't live for ourselves no more. We live for him. And just like he sacrificed, we got to sacrifice. We got to take on those sufferings. We got to take that cup that he, um, that he drank, you know what I'm saying? ourselves on our everyday walk but um also i want to see if uh brother yah yashaya could go back to uh judges five no since brother we, i can't no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> since, we're, since we're in the book of judges man judges five and then uh verse 11. this right? is not judges, this is judith oh my bad dang oh was it judith then no nah, i think it's judges know. 5 11. i might be tripping in i think it's still judges let me see yeah, 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 yeah. Because this is something we ought we we ought to do too. You know what I'm saying? Um, it says, "They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of the drawing water, there shall the, they that rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel, then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates." Right? And it's talking about the people that rehearse these righteous acts. Those are the people that are gonna get this get this mercy. And get this grace and be able to 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 uh properly indulge in the the sweeter things right to see those things that a man can't even fathom right we got to rehearse those righteous acts that's how we get the most high's attention right when, when, before we take on any war like the brother was saying you know we got to make sure the most high is on our side you know what i'm saying and to do that we got to rehearse the righteous acts and not be in sin like the brother was saying as well but um i yield great lesson Brother Donal. Con. And uh, just to just closing the statements from Brother Yashaya, man, I just want to say all it takes is for us to, you know what I'm saying, like, remember, going back to Revelation 2, right? I kept that up for a reason. It said, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, right? And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Hey, look, all we got to do is repent. Repent daily. You know what I'm saying? Repent for the kingdom is at hand. We have to remember that at one point in time, man, we was more than just niggas. We was more than just spicks, beaners, like the Ak always say. We was more than just these proverbs and bywords. But through our dis uh, disobedience, we became these proverbs and bywords, which caused us to fall in many wars, caused us to be captive to many people under many nations in a various amount of conditions and environments. All it takes is for you to understand that we just got to repent for brothers and sisters who, like we said, like the brother read earlier. Hey, look, we this word is meant for the people who are sick, not the people who are righteous. If you're sick spiritually or the people who don't know, you know what I'm saying? The truth at all. If you haven't come across this video, hey, just know that the brothers from the hopeful elect are saying, look, just repent. Remember that even though you might not feel like uh, you might not be mad enough. To, to, to have the same type of zeal that we have, to fast, to pray, to make yourself uncomfortable for the sake of the kingdom. Be mad for your foremothers and forefathers who were mad and got put to death for it. Be mad for your foremothers and forefathers who had to suffer a lot worse things than you. You know what I'm saying? Because ultimately, we're still one nation. And in order for us to become that nation again, that nation of kings and priests that was prophesied, we have to remember and repent. And we will never be that nation just on individual materialistic gain, individual spiritual gain, individual accomplishments. It's going to take for all of us to work together.
But with that, I you. All right, Con. My closing statement. Uh, can you go to Revelation five and ten, just to piggyback off of your closing statement? Con, Revelation, the fifth chapter and the tenth verse. <laughs> And has made un has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on earth. Uh, so, hey, look, I want to reign on earth again, man. I want to have that high estate. I'm remembering from whence I have fallen, and I hope that everybody else does too, because right now we have counterfeits. We have fake, you know what I'm saying, that make the flesh feel good, but we don't have the real thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm led to believe that when we have that real thing, man, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a feeling that you can't explain, that words can't explain. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to get back to that, that first estate. So, I'm trying to do these these first works to be a king, and to be a, a, to be a priest, because everybody knows that the authentic costs more. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, it's gonna it's gonna cost you a lot to get to that authentic, that authentic um throne or that authentic land and not have this fake baseball jersey on or a fake baseball cap or whatever you know what i'm saying replica. So, a replica kind of like the brother said so with that giving all honor and praise and glory to the most high god by the way of his son who's an instrument of salvation for the nation brother azrael brother the, Khan, the hopeful elect signing out hey con and make sure y'all tune in tomorrow sabbath lesson we'll be live again Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.